And joining us now to begin Red Sox Game Day Live, presented by DCU, President and CEO of the Red Sox, Sam Kennedy. First, let's talk about this streak because it was a little over a week ago. You leave New York, you've lost two out of three. You wonder where this race is going. Since then, you haven't lost a game. Eight in a row. You got a three and a half game lead in the American League East, the biggest since April. Things are looking pretty good right now. Well, things are looking good, and I think there's no coincidence that we started playing that way when we got back home and we had the, the packed houses here at Fenway with the great crowds and our unbelievable fans. So it's been a uh, it's been a great run. and. I'm not sure we're going to actually win 111 games. I think that's the pace we're on right now. We're, we're realistic, but uh, nothing wrong with shooting for that. All right, I was texting you last night during the game, okay? And, and you and I were talking a little bit. And if, if I believed everything I read and everything I heard on the radio, <laughs> I would think that nobody cares about this team whatsoever. And so I dug into the Nesson ratings a little bit. And, and you and I, as, as, as you know, uh, keep track of these things. And they are up significantly. Yeah. Not just overall uh, <laughs> ratings, but the, what they call the demo, the young younger demo, which I think is important for baseball, Huge. that would sort of indicate people care about this team, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah, well, listen, the, the, the role of columnists and uh, talk radio hosts in this town are uh, to, to generate debate, discussion, and dialogue. That doesn't mean that uh, we always have to necessarily agree with that opinion, and I uh, vehemently disagree with any assertion that baseball uh, in Boston is slipping or, or going in the wrong direction. I mean, we've sold out nine out of our last ten games here. Here at Fenway Park. We've had uh, ratings up 20% overall. And the key demos you mentioned, uh, uh, 18 to 34, 15% uh, increase, I think. Uh, cl close to 35% increase in the 25-54, the key uh, selling demo. So it's just um, uh, a, a been a great season. Obviously, 64 wins <laughs> contributes to that. Our baseball operations group has done an amazing job. And uh, John Henry, Tom Werner, you know, you look back over our 17 years here, they've considered consistently invested into the product on the field, invested heavily into Fenway Park to give a great experience to those 36, 37,000 people that come out here night after night. Now, don't get me wrong, baseball, like other industries, other sports, has issues and perhaps some rule changes that maybe we want to look at uh, to change some, th change some things. But um, I think on balance, baseball, uh, especially in Boston, is in a, a great, great spot. Talk about the industry real quick, because that is important. And obviously, there are a lot of teams that are not doing well right now. Yeah. Attendance is down across the game. And there seems to be a little bit of a shift in the conversation when you listen to Rob Manford right now from pace of play to the overall style of play, right? There's there's a lot of shifting and there's a lot of strikeouts and a yep. lot of walks. Does baseball need to do something to keep the game more exciting on a pitch-by-pitch -pitch basis? Yes, we do. I, I believe we do. I believe Rob Manfred believes that we do. I think the Players Association um, need to be a part of that discussion with Rob, and, and they will. They've had lots of discussions behind the scenes uh, that, of course, we're not privy to, but we, we get reports on them. Um, the commissioner's office is working hard to make sure that we're constantly monitoring the product and making sure that we're doing everything we can to present the best product for our fans. That's what this is all about. The ownership groups, management, the players, we're all in this together, and we got to put a great product out. If that means changing some rules or looking at some uh, changes in the way that the game has been played, well, then we'll do it. Um, but it also has to be put in context. Baseball has about 70 million fans that come to its uh, games every year. When you add up the other sports, that's more than all the other major sports combined. Here in Boston, with you know, we, we live in the best sports town in America, um, if you add up the Celtics, Bruins, Patriots, its attendance, uh, it pales in comparison to the fact that the Red Sox are drawing 2.8, 2.9 million fans. The other sports teams combined draw less than 2 million. We have tonnage. We have six months of game. You know better than anybody. <laughs> we play night in and night out. So it's a different product. All the sports products in this town are great. I'm a, I'm a fan. I grew up here um, in Boston rooting for all of them. But baseball has this massive, massive audience. So when you talk about uh, a diminution in attendance or ratings and certain markets, that's going to happen. But on balance, the audience and support for baseball in Boston and in this country is huge. Do you believe uh, that interest, that relevance is resonating with a younger audience here? You mentioned our demos are up. Do you think and by and large, the young audience is still into baseball here in Boston? Without question. All you have to do is take a look down Jersey Street or out uh, the, any of the concourses here at Fenway. I walk around pregame. You see kids and families everywhere coming to Fenway Park. It's one of the reasons why we 
we've been pushing uh, our $9 student tickets are. We want to get kids in high school, middle school to be able to come here on their own without their parents, enjoy Fenway Park, make the tickets affordable, get them watching on Nesson, listening uh, to the games on WEEI or, or on their phone. Uh, we need to be where the kids are, and I think uh, our affirmative marketing efforts, and again, Huge credit to baseball operations and the 2018 Red Sox. They've really got this fan base excited, and it's just a great group of players that really have each other's back, and uh, so far, so good. But we know we have a long way to go. The way we consume sports and entertainment has changed, obviously. I'm sitting here with an iPad and a phone in front of me right. while we speak. And, and there was a belief for a while that baseball was behind the other sports in that. Now, we, with Ness and Go, have streaming ability to watch the game. Uh, there seems to be a relaxing of the rules on social media. Is that something baseball has put on the forefront to try to help people consume the game in, in, in the modern way? Yes, absolutely. As an industry, we've done that. This used to be considered the secondary screen, and the television would be the primary screen. Well, this has become the primary screen. It's just a small television set or a small video uh, recorder, and we're all on our phones or our iPads, our mobile devices, uh, with the big screen television on as well. We're all a little bit distracted. Uh, it's just the way of the world. Uh, and certainly that younger demo, kids age 12, 13 through 20, 24, are always on those devices. So we as a sport, as an industry, need to be there. Thankfully, uh, we made a deal with baseball. We're able to stream all of our games on Ness and Go so people can take the Red Sox with them anywhere they are throughout New England, which is a great thing. And you can always stay in touch with the game through your mobile device if you're not right in front of that television set. All right, the last thing I'll ask you, some of that whole narrative is the fact that you haven't performed in October the last couple of years. No matter what happens here, this may end up being an historic regular season. That'll be the final test. How important is it for this team to do well this playoff run? Well, look, we've been saying for a long time, this, uh, th this Red Sox ownership group, our management team, is about playing baseball games in October. Uh, we've been fortunate to, to win three World Series championships, and I can tell you that John and Tom uh, are as hungry as anyone for another. Uh, we've clearly made the commitment uh, to invest at the major league level in international scouting, player development, uh, and Dave Dombrowski, and Tony La Russa, and Brian O'Halloran, and Raquel Ferreira and all the men and women in baseball ops have been working overtime to try and get us uh, back to uh, playing baseball deep, deep into October. When you get into the to the dance, anything could happen, and there's a lot of randomness, and it gets scary when you start to think about uh, things like one-game playoffs. So we want to win this division uh, and then take that next step in October. And we have every reason that this team is built to do it, and Dave was giving us some updates. He's going to be, uh, as always, working 24-7 as we approach the trade deadline to see if there are ways uh, to possibly improve upon uh, the best team in baseball, as you open this segment with. Any news you want to break for us right now? <laughs> Feel free. Uh, no, just that uh, let, let's keep this thing going, and, and great job to everyone in Nesson for uh, for bringing the, the entertaining baseball into everyone's home and, and onto the mobile devices uh, night in and night out. You guys are working your uh, tails off. We appreciate it. I'm glad you came on because I would have kept texting you all night. You never would have been able to watch the game. Great to see you, Sam. Just turn That's off always. the talk radio. Turn off. <laughs> watch Nesson. You'll yeah, be all set. Yeah, yeah. Sam, great stuff as always. Thank you. Sam Thanks. Kennedy with me here.